can machines create music? Well, no, machines can't create anything. That's not... Generative AI. The hell, why aren't people talking about this? Today, we'll be looking at a circuit called the Solar Sound Module. This was made by a guy named Ralph Schwab in 1996 as a kind of fun little project. It's a single chip audio synth, which is powered by a small solar cell, similar to what you'd find on a calculator and these make some really interesting, very organic sounds. Now, I'd known about these for a long time and I'd even built them in the past before, but while researching this video, I dug a little bit more into actually what makes them work and it is super interesting. I love the little interactions inside the chip which produce these sounds. So let's look at the circuit and then we'll build our own. So this is the circuit here. So this uses the 74HC14 chip, which is a Hex Schmidt trigger inverter chip. What does that mean? Well, it has six Schmidt trigger inverters in here. Instead of a classic inverter, which will just take a input signal and see if that's above or below its switching point and then switch its output to whatever that is, a Schmidt trigger has a different switching high and a different switching low point. So when a signal comes in and if it's above the high switching point, it will switch high. But that signal then has to go all the way down to a lower low point before it switches into the low mode. These are very useful if you're trying to clean up noisy digital signals or converting analog to digital signals, but they're also useful in this application. If we look here, we can see there's two of these connected together. The output of this inverter is connected to the input of this one, and the output of that one is connected to the input through this capacitor, and then there's a resistor coupling that as well. So what does this do? Well, this makes an oscillating pair here. The resistor and capacitor size will determine how fast this oscillates back and forth. And if this is in the frequency we can hear, well, we can use that to produce sound. Now you'll notice there's three sets of these inverter pairs here. Here, here, and then one split across the chip. And those are not coupled in any way. They're completely independent. This doesn't have anything connecting directly to here, but it does have an indirect connection. So if this is powered from a small solar cell, solar cells can only produce pretty small current. So when one of these is switching, it'll take a lot of that current for itself and it'll disrupt the ability of these other ones to switch. So if we have these all fighting for current and a very low current supply, well, they'll kind of go in and out of phase with each other. Some will be able to run for a while and then other ones will take over and they'll fall into these crazy resonances which we can use to produce sound. And that's where the interesting behavior of this circuit comes from. By attaching your speaker to any part of here, you can get a different sound and you can get very organic and very interesting noises coming out of it. As the light changes or as even the value of components changes, as RC interference comes in and affects things, the noise that this produces will change. It's never gonna be the same. You can never build two of these that are exactly the same sounding, which is a really cool little feature. So let's get it built on the breadboard. And you know, I always say breadboarding your circuits is important, but it is super important on this one. So here I've got it built on the breadboard. You can see I've got some different capacitors there. You can play around with what capacitors and resistor values you use. Anything within these ranges will produce acceptable results. And again, because there's so many tiny changes in these chips, circuits, capacitor values, all that, nothing will sound the same. So try whatever you want. Now we can connect this anywhere on the chip and see how it sounds. And then if we vary the light on it, it'll change the noise it makes. So if you have one of these on your windowsill, throughout the day, the noise it makes will change depending on the light amount of hitting it, the heat, all of these factors. So they're very organic and they have very, very interesting no noises they can make. And if we attach this to different parts of the chip, we can see what sound it produces. I'm gonna actually put my mic beside this.
So of course now you can leave it like this, but I'm gonna build a little freeform circuit using these parts. This circuit is pretty simple, so I was able to build everything just on the single chip. So I'll uh, be quiet and let you watch, and if anything important comes up, I'll pipe in and just make a note of it. I finally bought a third hand tool, so hopefully that'll make some of my builds a little bit easier in the future. important thing to note is you do need to use a piezoelectric speaker here. Uh, the lower voltage the better, so something around 3 volts should work for this. But be sure to test it out beforehand. As soon as you connect the second leg of the solar cell, it will start working. You can make sure you've made all your connections correctly and go test it out. I'll just show mine here, chirping away in the sun and you can see what they sound like. So that's it for this short little video today. I hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any other ideas for interesting analog projects, drop them down in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Take care.